Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about evaluating functions. So we already introduced the function, talked about functions, how they look. So now we're going to talk about evaluating them when you input something into your function and get an output. There's different types of outputs and it's actually a bad output. And we're going to talk about that. All right, so let's get started. So here we go. So we have a function which we normally refer to as f of x, right? So there's an, always an input and an output relationship that we discussed when we talk about functions, right? So in this case, the f of x, right, is going to be your input. Whatever is in between those parentheses is going to be the input. It's going to be the independent variable of your function. And the whole thing, the whole f of x is going to be your output. So a lot of people refer to f of x as y or, you know, whatever the output of your function is supposed to be. Before we start evaluating, though, let's, let's have a little reminder here. Let's remember this box that we have up here. So the box is actually referring to two scenarios. One, when you have zero over a number, that's why we have an n there, and when we have a number over zero, right? So a lot of times when you have a fraction and you have zero, you don't really know if it's zero or undefined, because it can be one of, the, one of the two, depending on where is the zero. Do you guys remember when? So here's a quick way that you probably will never forget if you do this like two or three times in your head, right? If you have zero over a number, what does that say to you? What does that spell? On right zero number says on so on you're good and it's gonna be a good number which is just zero so just zero if it's a zero over a number but if it's a number over zero which says no it's a big no-no we're gonna call this undefined so what I'm saying is whenever you have zero in the bottom it's gonna be undefined that just can't happen all right so Let's start evaluating some functions and hope we don't run into any undefined answers, which is the only bad type of answers that we don't want because we can't hold a value. We don't know what they are. We can't find them. So let's say we're, we're given a function, 3x plus 1, right? And then we're told to find f of 2. So whenever we're told to find f of something, what they're actually telling us to do is to replace every x in your function with this new value of x right so if I'm gonna have f of 2 I'm actually gonna rewrite my function with open parentheses everywhere there's a everywhere there's an x so there's only one x here next to the 3 I'm gonna have an open parentheses in here and I'm gonna plug in I'm going to plug in a 2 wherever that goes so what I'm saying is I replace whatever's between my parentheses, wherever there was an x before. So this would be f of 2 is equal to 6 plus 1 or 7. So we just evaluated the function at x equal to 2. So the value of the function, the value of the function at 2, when x is equal to 2, is 7. So that's what we refer to as the value, just the y value. And this even means something else. This is a coordinate. When x is equal to 2, y is 7. We can look at it like that. So there's a relationship between 2 and 7. So now we compute the other one, right? So same idea. We're going to have f of 5. So I'm going to leave a blank wherever there's an x. Oh, an open parentheses where there's an x. In this case, we have two x's, right? So I'm going to plug in 5 into here and to here. So I'm going to have 5 on top, 5 on the bottom. So now, when I have this, this is going to give me 5, and then 5 minus 5 is 0. So this is an area where I have 5 over 0, or a number over 0. So number over 0 tells me no, so the answer to this is just undefined. So what this is telling us is that we don't know the answer, we don't have an answer for when x is equal to 5 for this function. All right? And this relates to what we call asymptote because on the asymptote we can't actually find a number. The function is not defined on there. It's a vertical asymptote. So undefined, we're actually going to relate it to vertical asymptotes. The next example, the first one was with numbers, which are normally a little easier to understand because we've been used to numbers. 
But then whenever we start throwing in some variables, it starts getting a little annoying. It starts being like, oh, I'm not so comfortable with this. But it's exactly the same thing. A number and a variable are exactly the same thing. So let's do this again, where we're going to have to replace every x in the every x in the in the function with an open parentheses and then plug in whatever is inside the new parentheses, right? So here we're going to have open parentheses squared minus 1 because our function is x squared minus 1. So now we're just going to throw in this negative a in here and then we're just going to evaluate the function by applying the function onto this thing, right? So we have negative a squared. What is negative a times negative a? Negative and negative cancel, so it becomes positive. a times a is a squared, so this is positive a squared minus 1. So we don't know what a squared minus 1 is, but they're not asking us give me a number. They're telling me to evaluate the function. I did evaluate the function. And negative a is a squared plus 1. That's all I had to tell them. I did have to tell them a number. All right? Now here's the next step. There's, a, there's another example, example b, where they ask us to find f of a plus h. So we're like, OK, let's do the same thing. Leave an open parentheses where they have an x, square it, minus 1, and then we input we input this into the parentheses. So a plus h. Now, there's a reason why I chose this example. There's a very common, common mistake whenever you have a plus h squared. People think that a plus h squared is equal to a squared plus h squared. They just simply distribute the square to both of them. And that is not what you do. You do not do that. What this means is that you have a plus h and a plus h multiplying. So here's the word that you may not like to hear because it must bring back old memories of the foil. So whenever we have something squared is the same thing times the same thing. So whenever we have a binomial or two terms adding together, it's a folding operation. So a times a is a squared. a times h is a h. a times h, a h. And h times h, h squared. And then we just bring down the minus 1. I'm going to hide from here so we can finish this problem. Maybe I'll just scroll up a little and come back in the camera. And now we're going to have where we combine like terms, and that'll be our last step. So it'll be a squared plus 2ah plus a squared minus 1. And that evaluates f of a plus h. So yeah, I threw in some, number, some letters in there, but it's the same thing as the numbers. So that finishes the, the evaluation process of whenever you're giving a function. Just look out for make sure you don't get an x in the uh, a zero on the bottom, so your function, so your answer is not undefined. So anything else, just plug it in, get an answer, you're done. All right, but we're actually not done yet. We still have another little section in here in the evaluation of functions, which is going to be called the difference quotient. And this is actually very important because it's going to come back in the near future when we start taking derivatives. So you may have heard that calculus has derivatives in it, but soon enough you'll know what they're about. They're pretty cool, I promise. So this is actually the most annoying part of derivatives, so I thought I should introduce it now so you guys can get a little feel for it. So when we actually attack derivatives, you guys already know what to do. So by the difference quotient, I just give you this formula where I do x plus h right, minus f of x over h. So what does this even mean? I like to do some steps and parts, right? So first, I'm going to evaluate every part of the formula. This formula has an f of x plus h, so I'm going to find it first. So I'm going to leave open parentheses wherever there's an x in my function, like I do before, and then I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug in here 
what's inside of my parentheses. So in this case, I'm going to have x plus h and x plus h. All right? So same thing, x plus h times x plus h plus x plus h minus 2. So I'm going to fold this again. So I'm going to have x times x, x squared, x times h, x h, and these two, x h plus h squared. Now I'm going to have a plus h plus uh, plus x plus an h minus a 2. I'm going to bring it straight down, combine the like terms. So now I'm going to have my x squared by itself, right? And then I'm going to look for all these x h, x h. So I'm going to have two x h's. Then I'm going to have an h squared by itself, then an x by itself plus x plus another h minus a 2 right so what I did here just to keep you guys in check I combined the like terms here right and it gave me this and then I just brought down the rest the x came down the h came down the minus 2 came down so I just computed f of x plus h right but according to my formula I need to do f of x plus h, right, minus whatever f of x is divided by h. So it's telling me to do. So I'm going to plug in there what f of x plus h is, right? So I'm telling that this right here is equal to f of x plus h. So I'm going to plug this in here. So I'm going to have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h minus 2. And now I'm going to plug in f of x in here, but f of x is the same f of x. So I'm just going to plug that in there, x squared plus x minus 2, right? And that's all over h. So I don't do anything with the h. It just stays there. So I'm actually now going to try to clean up my top a little bit by bringing down the first parentheses because nothing's happening to it. Nothing's happening to the first parentheses. I'm going to disappear from here for a second. So I'm going to bring down the first parentheses. So x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h minus 2. And then I'm going to distribute. I'm going to distribute this negative to everyone here. Make sure I do that properly, right? So now this turns into minus x squared minus x plus 2 right and now I'm going to combine like terms on the top so I first start with the x squared so the x squared x squared and minus x squared are going to cancel so that gets rid of that Let's not also forget that we have an h in the bottom. h is not really important because it's just by there by itself doing nothing. But let's not forget it. So let's keep an h on the bottom. And I have our fully simplified answer right here. So we're going to have, uh, let's see, we have 2xh. Does this guy mix with any other xh? I don't see anybody in the reds. So we're just going to bring him right down because there was nobody here in the reds. So just got to get rid of him. So now how about h squared? Is there any h squared? Nope. Nobody in the reds to mix with. Next, how about the x's? In the reds, is there anybody in the reds over there? Yeah, there's a negative x. So this x and this negative x are going to cancel. They're the same thing with opposite signs. So they're going to go away. How about this H over here? Anybody in the red? Nope. So we're just going to bring them right down. Last, 
this negative 2 and this positive 2. What are they going to do? They're going to cancel. They're the only numbers left. So, we're actually almost done because if you guys realize, there is something that can be done with what we have here. So what can be done is that you can actually factor out an H from everybody in the top. Because this guy has an H, this guy has an H, and this guy has an H. So when we factor out an H from everybody in the top, we're going to have 2x plus H plus 1 over H. These two H's are going to cancel, and that's going to be our final answer. Our difference quotient. Our difference quotient is this right here. 2x plus h plus 1. So that's going to be our final answer that we that we have. All right? So I'm going to come back over here in the camera and the, I'm going to show you guys after this a few examples of how to apply the difference quotient, how it gets a little harder depending on what kind of a function you're given. Here I just gave you guys a polynomial so if I give you guys a fraction, if I give you guys a radical, how those examples going to affect your answer and other types of evaluations of, of functions as well. So stick around and I'll see you next time.